Hello and welcome to another episode with the Nairobi Hospital. Today we'll be discussing about breastfeeding and taking us through that discussion is uh, Veronica Zabedi, a senior nurse at the Nairobi Hospital Maternity and Nasari. Welcome. Thank you very much, uh, senior nurse Zabedi. Breastfeeding week is observed in the first week of August. You could take us through the importance of breastfeeding. Uh, breastfeeding has so many uh, benefits to the baby and to the mother. Mm -hmm. Starting with the benefits to the mother. Mothers who exclusively breastfeed, you find that it helps them to shed their weight. Mothers who breastfeed exclusively, it helps them to have fewer chances of getting bleeding tendencies because the hormones that releases the milk is the same same hormones that work on the uterus and it helps them to it helps the uterus to to contract so less bleeding mm. and mothers who breastfeed they tend to have lesser chances of getting postnatal depressions mm -hmm. benefits to the babies babies who are being breastfed you find that they have lesser chances of they develop immunity because the milk has antibodies that protects, protects our babies from getting other infections. Mm -hmm. they, you'll rarely have, those babies will have lesser uh, opportunities, lesser chances of getting diarrheal diseases, ear, nose and throat infections. You don't want a mother who will be coming to the hospital now and then mm -hmm. looking for treatment because of mm -hmm. the baby did not acquire the, the immunity from the breast milk. Mm -hmm. the, the milk has component in it that makes our babies become leaner. Chances of these babies become obese are very less. So in future they are not going to get problems like obesity, those chronic uh, 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 diseases like diabetes and hypertension. And breast milk, that act of the baby sucking, as they suck, they exercise their jaws. As they exercise their jaws, even speech becomes easier for them for, to start pronouncing their words. Mm -hmm. Another benefit of breastfeeding you bond with your baby and you learn your baby. And um, what of when a mother has a low milk production? What are some of the things that they should do to boost their production of milk? When the mother has reached term mm. pregnancy and is ready to deliver and she delivers, the body is already set mm. to receive this baby and the breastfeeding. It's already set. Initial time, you'll have little colostrum, little milk, but that does not mean that you're not going to get milk. Things that you're supposed to put in place to help you trigger more milk to come is by the act of you latching your baby on the breast. The more time you put your baby on the breast, the more time you stimulate the hormones in the brain to trigger more milk to come. Then another thing is the duration. How long do you allow your baby to be on the breast? Mm -hmm. I expect you to have your baby on the breast for a prolonged period of time. Okay. Another thing, relax, because a stressed in brain will be will not be able to stimulate milk to come. Mm -hmm. You need to relax, mm -hmm. know that nature is going to take its role. Mm -hmm. Then another thing, take fluids in plenty. When you take fluids in plenty, that again will stimulate milk to come. Mm -hmm. Yes. So for how long should uh, a child mm -hmm. breastfeed, let's say one breast? For one breast, mm -hmm. initial time, especially for the first two to three days, it is not abnormal for the baby to stay on the breast even for 30 minutes, 45 minutes or one hour. Mm -hmm. It's very, very normal. Mm -hmm. And after every two to three hours, they need to be put on the breast. Every two to three hours, they need to be put on the breast. Mm -hmm. Yes. But by the time we reach on the third, fourth day, the milk is now in plenty. You have already stimulated. The milk is now in plenty. Mm -hmm. The baby can stay on the breast for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes, the baby settles to sleep. The baby is already satisfied. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would like you to take, uh, to take us through or rather demonstrate the different uh, breastfeeding techniques that are there that are healthy and safe for both the mother and the child especially for new mothers who have gotten their new babies most of them face the challenges in terms of Operation. proper placing of their child during breastfeeding okay we have different methods of, of latching our babies on the on the breast mm -hmm. i will demonstrate one of it is what we call cradle position if you you can buy a breast feeding pillow you can improvise to use a normal pillow like this. Okay. Then get your baby. When you are getting your baby, mm -hmm. we have what we call cradle position, where you place let the time of the baby between the time of the mother, mm -hmm. support the neck and the back and the bottom. It's you to put your baby as near possible to, your, to the breast. Mm -hmm. We have what we call cross cradle position, especially this one is used for babies who are premature or 
small babies mm -hmm. where you place your baby you hold your baby on the with one hand the head the neck and the and the bottom you hold it mm -hmm. and then with the hand that is next to the breast that you're going to breastfeed you lash your baby with it that is one way it's called cross cross, cross cradle position mm -hmm. we have what we call football position which is used it is comfortable for mothers who have who have had cesarean mothers who have had uh, twins whereby the legs and the the legs of the baby is outside mm -hmm. for mothers like especially for twins you place your baby in this position so that you can be able to put your baby as near possible to the breast as you as you can mm -hmm. this is what we call under armpit position or football position mm -hmm. then we have another method whereby a mother can lie down and then you can be able to do it to breastfeed your baby as you you lie down mm -hmm. that is one another method of breastfeeding mm -hmm. so you can choose whichever type of a method that's, con that's convenient mm -hmm. for you though for first time mothers i don't like them to use the lying position mm. because some sometimes you will find that maybe they can suffocate the baby they can sleep the baby can slide from the nipple from the right place from the areola mm. they can slide and latch on the nipple then they end up getting cracked nipples mm -hmm. yes wow that is very interesting mm -hmm. <laughs> let's now talk about pain and discomfort during breastfeeding what are some of the situations that are occasioned in this state okay in ideal case breastfeeding should not be painful when you are just latching the baby on the breast it should not be painful for first time mothers the first in first few days of breastfeeding you will find some bit of funny sensation or discomfort which should be able to go mm -hmm. we find that sometimes when you are breastfeeding the hormones that releases the milk is the same same hormones that works, works on your uterus so chances of you getting some cramps like pain is expected but with the time it should be able to go we okay. expect by the end of one week that pain should have gone mm -hmm. and uh, in regards to the breast related complications you have mentioned about the breast related complications mm -hmm. one of them being the cracked nipples mm -hmm. and then we also have mastitis mm -hmm. how should the mothers handle such situations most of the time mm -hmm. for mothers to get cracked nipples or sore nipples it is maybe purely because of poor latching technique mm -hmm. purely because of poor latching technique mm -hmm. if you latch your baby ensure the baby latches above the nipple on the black area that is called areola that is the best part okay if you find your baby has latched on the nipple mm -hmm. please disconnect the latch mm -hmm. because chances of you getting so nipples of cracked nipples are high mm -hmm. another thing is how do you remove your baby on the breast the baby has already is sucking mm -hmm. the way you remove your baby very fast on the breast without using the right methods of maybe pressing the chin to to, to disconnect the latch or maybe using a clean small finger to insert in the baby's mouth to disconnect the latch you just remove the baby abruptly from the breast it's going to lead to cracked nipples mm -hmm. so most of the time i encourage my mothers ensure your baby latches up to the black area mm -hmm. of your nipple that's called areola mm -hmm. that is okay you won't get cracked nipples you won't get sore nipples mm -hmm. you mentioned there uh, are some techniques that one can use especially when they are for a mother who has uh, cracked nipples mm -hmm. you have gotten the cracked nipples we appreciate that that mm -hmm. that's our challenge mm -hmm. what are we supposed to do we can use you can express the breast milk apply it on the nipple it gives the nipple time to heal mm -hmm. you can use what we call nipple shields La place it on top of the nipple so the baby latches on top of that nipple shield it will give the nipple time to do what to, to heal, heal. Mm -hmm. okay okay and then most of the time when you, you find that maybe one breast is cracked more than the other mm -hmm. you will favor you will use the, the the breast that is not cracked so that to give this other breast time to heal mm -hmm. we expect after 24 hours of giving that breast time to heal there should be less pain healing should have started taking place because the breast the, the it has a high supply of blood mm. so healing should be faster okay mm. on breast related complications we do have the cracked nipples you do have mastitis mm. what are some of the measures that mothers can take to prevent mm. such situations okay breast related complications mm -hmm. Uh, is a, something that can be prevented and is something that can occur. Some of the problems that we find, sore nipples, cracked nipples. Then you find our mothers can get engorged breasts. 
others and you see problem graduate from one problem to another if you don't take precautionary measures. Mm -hmm. Then you'll find that from enlarged breast, you are likely to get what? Either mastitis, blocked ducts, breast abscess. Mm -hmm. And some of these things, what are the causes? When you don't breastfeed your baby, you have full breast and you don't breastfeed your baby or you use poor latching technique, you are breastfeeding your baby on the nipple alone, mm -hmm. that again, the breasts are not being emptied. Or you want to do what? To, to, to put specific times mm -hmm. to breastfeed your baby. And your breast, there is more milk that is being formed, less that is coming out. Mm -hmm. You are likely to get these complications. Mm -hmm. And what we advise our mothers, you do what? Express if you breastfeed your baby first. Mm -hmm. Breastfeed. If you find your baby is full and your breasts are, are still full, you can express the milk. You can express that milk manually. You can express that milk by use of a breast pump, manual pump, or by use of an electric pump. Mm -hmm. And that milk you're not going to, to, to discard it. We can store it. Mm -hmm. We can store it. Mm -hmm. Another thing, we can be able to use bras. Tight bras, again, are associated with the causes of these complications. So you are allowed to use a bra that is maybe two sizes larger than your normal size mm -hmm. so that you don't get such problems. Okay. On the issue of breast milk, I, milk is very precious. Mm -hmm. I don't like discarding the milk. Milk that if you find you have a lot of milk, I will advise you, express that milk so long as you maintain high standard of cleanliness, your equipments are very well sterilized, mm -hmm. express the milk, put them in the bottles or in the disposable milk bags, write the name and the date, put it in the freezer. Milk that has been kept in the freezer, it can, be, it can stay there up to six months, it is still safe. Mm -hmm. And when you are coming now to use that milk, use fast in, fast out method. Put your milk, remove your milk, put it in the room air, let it thaw. Mm. And then get a container with hot water, immerse your container with milk there, let it warm, and you can feed your baby. Mm. Once you have removed the milk in the freezer, you can put it in the normal fridge temperature. And anytime the baby wakes up, just warm that milk and feed the baby. Mm -hmm. Within 24 hours, that milk should have been used. After that, you need to discard the rest. How well, how, how should somebody warm a baby's milk? Because I hear this, it's also bad, it's, it's not advised to, to, be, boil. to boil or microwave. Yes, you're not baby. supposed to microwave mm -hmm. because you tend to destroy the nutrients. Mm -hmm. And that's why we advise you get a container with hot water, then dip your, 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 what, your bottle mm -hmm. there that has the milk, let it warm. Then, before you feed your baby that milk, please test to ensure it is good temperature, you don't burn your baby. You test that milk by on the top of your, the back of your hand, hand mm -hmm. so that you don't do what? You don't burn your baby. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any tips on healthy breastfeeding, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic? We have very many mothers mm -hmm. who are maybe curious to know, mm -hmm. am I exposing my child? Am I by that close proximity with my child during mm -hmm. breastfeeding? Mm -hmm. What are the measures that I should, measures that I should take to prevent any outcome of uh, a transmission at the moment it's recommended that when uh, maybe a mother is covid positive mm -hmm. and you have delivered a baby who is a baby and you are wondering should i leave my baby should i isolate myself with the baby mm -hmm. no you should not isolate your baby mm -hmm. unless the baby has a problem that needs to the baby needs to be separated mm -hmm. from you but if the baby is a healthy baby you are allowed so long as you wash your hands put on a mask you are allowed to to do what to breastfeed your baby, you're allowed to bond with your baby. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's no need to fear. There is no need to fear. Okay. There is no need to so fear. there's also no transmission from if, if you're a COVID positive mother, yes. that there's no transmission Mission from you to, to the, the baby, baby that yes. you're breastfeeding. Yes, yes. Okay. Mm. You do have classes that you train our young mothers on uh, best breastfeeding practices. Oh yes, we at do. the Nairobi Hospital. We do, we do have breastfeeding uh -huh. classes. We are here to empower our mothers. Mm -hmm. We are here to show them that there is need for us to breastfeed our babies, importance of breastfeeding, how to change our babies, how to care for the cord. We don't want our babies to come back with complications. So we have those classes for our mothers who have already delivered mm -hmm. and they are within the hospital. You are allowed to attend them. Mm -hmm. every, every alternate days, we do it at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. to around 11 a.m. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Senior Nas Zebedee, for that insightful discussion on breastfeeding. Now, if you have got any questions, you can post them on the comment section below or send an email on hosp at nbihosp.org or engage our professionals using our social media platforms. Until next time, I'm Mothani Wawero.